Hey everybody, welcome back to Knit Case Designs. My name is James, if you're just joining me. Um, I make handmade artisan soaps, and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing. I just got my order from Rustic Essentials. Um, these folks make fragrance oils, and they sell a couple other different items like packaging and things like that. Um, I've seen a couple different folks that I really like watching use this company, so I wanted to get some samples, try some stuff out, because um, I pretty much buy all of my fragrance oils from Nurture or Nature's Garden, and so I kind of want to branch out and see what everybody else has to offer. So this is my box. I just got in the mail about 10 minutes ago, so I'm going to go ahead and hack on in there. I'm just going to use a steak knife. Use a box cutter if you have one. I don't have one. So... I've also got some uh, oils going here so we can test a couple of these out right away. Um, I've got about two pounds of soap so I can split it off and make, um, I've got my one pound mold here and then I'm going to throw out some uh, cupcakes, I think. Um, so for starters, this is very nicely packaged, very tight. Got this lovely card here with some information from the crafting library. It has been a pleasure serving you. We appreciate your business and confidence and you oh and the confidence you placed in us. That's very nice. Thoughtful. Thank you. And then of course my packing slip. So the fragrance oils that I have and like I'll try all of these individually. Um, but I'll just read off to you guys what I got. So I got a grapefruit tangelo for a nice citrusy a lemon verbena, again, love citrus. A luscious vanilla, because I love vanilla. Um, vanilla sandalwood. I've tried another vanilla sandalwood and it did not work out, so I'm gonna try theirs and see if it's better. Uh, one called Barbershop, which I'm wondering if that might make a really great addition to my shade soap line. Um, I got one called Hipster, just because I thought it was funny. Um, Bamboo Sugarcane, which is one of their highly rated like bestsellers. Um, straight up lavender. I normally use lavender essential oil for my lavender soaps, but I figure why not just try a fragrance oil? Give it a go. Um, cedar, sage, and blackberry. I thought that might be a nice addition if I make like a um, a woodsier type soap. I hate using gender in my soaps because they're soap. Um, so I try and only refer to things kind of as what they smell like. <laughs> Um, but I guess if you guys want to use the term manly or masculine, go for it. Um, I won't be doing that. Um, we got Alpine Frost, which is another sort of like woodsy, um, smell. And then I got a free sample as well, um, of just a piece of soap. So I got a soap sample. Um, if you order so much, you get like a free gift. And so I wanted a sample of the barbershop in a, in a cold process soap to see what it smells like. So, got that, and then they sent me some goodies. They got me a pen, or gave me a pen. Love pens. And some candy. Looks like a butterscotch and a mint. Oh, it's key lime. That's a little interesting. Um, we got some packing peanuts, which I'll go ahead and just tuck them in here, and I'll fish them out later. So again, very secure packaging. Really appreciate that. this out of here. So here is my bag of all the oils that I got. Um, and I must have gotten more. Did I get more? I think I read them all off. Yeah, I read them all off. Just seems like a lot more in the bag. And then this is my little soap sample. Make sure I'm actually centered. That's my little soap sample of the barbershop. I love this drop swirl that they did. Let's move the box out of the way. So the ingredients for this are really nice. I love that they put it all very, like, it's very organized on the label. So this contains 
olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, and castor oil, shea butter, kaolin clay, goat's milk, sodium lactate, sodium hydroxide, which is lye, uh, and fragrance oil. So yeah, a really nice standard recipe. I don't use palm oil, mostly because I know all the hullabaloo against it. You can get responsibly sourced palm oil, which I'm sure they do. Um, so, just gonna hit whatever. Mmm. It smells really, um, kind of fresh, very, like, linen-y. I can definitely smell, like, it smells like shaving cream and... Like aftershave. Mmm. Mmm. That'd be a soap I like to shave with. And I'll try it another time and let you know how that works out, but I really enjoy it. So, to start off, thanks to Rustic Essentials for sending this stuff out um, in such a quick fashion. I ordered this stuff like at the end of last week, and it came like super quick. Um, this is not a sponsored video. I'm strictly just like a customer who ordered this stuff and I'm just trying it out. So, um, I'm just shouting out to Rustic Essentials. Great work. <laughs> um, so I love that they have on here, um, uh, very clearly like labeled that this is rated for candles, bath and body. Um, it also has the flashpoint, that FP. So flashpoint, that refers to the temperature at which your fragrance oil will burn off and then you could lose your fragrance. So if you're um, soaping higher than 130, you could potentially burn off your fragrance. So if you were using something like this in a hot process soap, hot process soaps get really hot, like over 180. So you'd wanna let it cool down before you added your fragrance. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. I'm gonna give this a smell. So this is Grapefruit Tangelo. Mmm. Oh, that is such a strong grapefruit smell. I love it. It's hard to get a good grapefruit. Grapefruit essential oil is so expensive. So this is the lemon verbena. Mmm. That is a very strong, like, pure lemon smell. Mmm. Like... I get hints of like a lemongrass, because obviously verbena refers to a plant, right? Verbena is a type of, it's a it's a landscape plant, it's a flower. Um, so you get kind of a lemongrassy, but also just like a strong citrus vibe. Um, this is another, oh, so I got, that's why there are so many. So I got like two ounces of each, so they just came in one ounce bottles, I think. So this is Hipster. So hipster, I'm getting, I'm getting some ozone in there. I'm getting some aftershavey type feel, kind of like an old spice, um, very light citrusy kind of notes, and a little bit of, a little fruity, but just overall a very clean smell. Definitely like a like a smell like. A little leathery, kind of woodsy. I like it. This is the cedar, sage, and blackberry. It looks like they filled this one right up to the top. Mmm. This is very, like, I can really feel, or like smell the blackberry in it. It feels very genuine. I'm not getting a ton of cedar. I do, it is like a, it's like a background. And I can kind of get some of the more herbaceous notes from the sage, but it's kind of, it's pretty blackberry heavy, which is okay. Um, that's another lemon verbena, so I'll set that there. This is Alpine Frost. Ooh. This one is very woodsy. It has like strong like pine. But still like there's a little bit of a citrus behind it. 
very very woodsy i love that but it's also got like kind of an ozone like a spa sort of quality to it like it's got a freshness this is the vanilla sandalwood this is so full i love it mm. this is this smells so good this smells like like you really get that that quality from the sandalwood. I don't know if anyone's used like Mysore soap, like that's a sandalwood soap from India. Oh, it smells so good. And then the vanilla just like it gives it a little something, you know? It's kinda like mixing your your sweet and salty foods, like what well, is a terrible example, like chocolate covered bacon. Um another hipster. But vanilla sandalwood, I think I might try this one today. I really enjoy that. So this is just the pure lavender. My dogs are playing in the background. They're being ridiculous. So if you hear any barking, it's them. Okay. I'm not getting like a super strong lavender smell from this, but I'm also kind of conditioned to like the essential oil lavender smell. This has kind of like a, like a baby powder sort of smell to it. Like I can definitely smell some lavender, but to me it's really got more of like a powder, it's kind of like Estee Lauder. Um, it smells like, it smells good. Just maybe not strong lavender, but of course it can also smell very different inside of a product. Um, that's the one thing to remember too, is like fragrance oils are only gonna smell a certain way right out the bottle. And then when you have them in a product, they could smell totally different. And then they're also gonna behave certain ways. Like they could fade, they could intensify something, like notes can become stronger or weaker. So it's just something you gotta try out. So this is that Barbershop Essential, or Barbershop Fragrance Oil. So it was actually called Barbershop 1920s. Mmm, I still love this fragrance. I like it in the bar and I like it in the hair. It smells a lot sweeter in the bottle. Like it's got kind of like a, like a sugary sort of quality to it. Um, but I still can feel that like sense of like, I don't know, shaving cream and, and aftershave and I don't know. It's very, uh, it's very barbershop. How about that? <laughs> Go figure. Good naming choice, Rustic Essentials. Um, this is the Bamboo and Sugar Cane. Again, this is one of their top sellers. I wanted to try it because I did, I just roamed around um, basically got on their website, roamed around, looked at their best sellers, looked at things in like the fragrance types that I like. So I really wanted to get some more woodsy um, nature type scents. I wanted to um, get a couple more like citrusy type fragrances because I love citrusy fragrances. Um, wanted to try out just a couple things like fruity. I don't do a lot of fruity stuff. Um, there is a slight difference between citrus and fruity, um, to me anyway, like that sweet sort of fragrance. I don't do a lot of that. So I wanted to try something new. So this is bamboo and sugar cane. Hmm. Hmm. I like it. I really do. I'm getting some citrus from it. I'm getting, I'm definitely getting the bamboo, like the fresh sort of rain smell and like the kind of grassy green earthiness of like a bamboo and a sugar cane. I don't know if anyone's actually ever seen a sugar cane. It looks very similar to a bamboo, honestly. They grow in huge tall stalks. They're very thin. They're not super wide. Mm, that smells great. That's another one I wanted to get. I wanted to get some more like spa type fragrances. This is the Luscious Vanilla. You'll notice right off the bat, it is a totally different color. It's this beautiful amber color. Oh wow, that is a strong vanilla. And that smells exactly like I want vanilla to smell like. It's 
It's not strictly just like a solid vanilla. It's got like a caramely like smell to it. I'm getting like just like kind of those deep brown sugar caramel but still like that that strong vanilla liqueur type smell. Mmm. Oh, that is just fantastic. Luscious vanilla all the way. I'm all about that life. Um, so I think today what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here. I'm going to sort some things out. I think what I want to try is I want to try the vanilla sandalwood. And I think I want to try ugh, tough decisions. We're going to do that one for sure. So vanilla sandalwood. How about we do the hipster? So we'll do vanilla sandalwood and we'll do hipster. And then I'll be back here in just a few and we will make the soap. See you in a sec. Okay guys, we are back. I am ready to go. I've got my colors ready. I took a hot minute to just think about like what kind of design I wanted to do. Um, we're making two soaps today, so I gotta kind of think duly, right? Um, I've got my stuff all ready to go. Uh, like I said before, we're making hipster, and we're going to make vanilla sandalwood. For the vanilla sandalwood, I'll be using a mixture. It's um, Copper Sparkle Mica from Brambleberry and Brown Oxide, also from Brambleberry. Um, and these are all dispersed. Um, the, the colors here are dispersed in sweet almond oil. And then the titanium dioxide I'll be using is dispersed in a little bit of distilled water. So for that soap, like I said, we'll be using our mixture of... Um, brown oxide and copper sparkle mica and then in i'm the rest of the soap is going to be white so it's going to be white and the copper sparkle mica what i think i'm going to do is i think i'm going to layer um or rather i'm going to do like it's hard to ah uh, so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to <clears throat> have a layer of um like white and then put a thin layer, like a mica line, of this 24 karat gold mica in between. And then have like an in the pot sort of deal with the rest of it. So I have like a line in between. I might do two lines. So maybe do like a layer, a thin layer of white, do a, do a mica line, <clears throat> do a thin layer of um, brown, do a mica line, and then mix the rest together and then have it on top and then dust the top with the gold. I think that'd look really neat. Um, for the hipster soap, I've chosen three colors that I think are gonna be kind of fun. So this is a silver mica. It's, well, what's it called? Let me grab it, hang on. Oh, so many things. So this is called Celestial Silver Mica from Nurture Soap. It's got kind of a periwinkle purplish color along with the silver. Um, and I think it's gonna look really nice. And I added in a touch, just like a sprinkling of uh, Snowflake Sparkle Mica from Brambleberry in here, just to give it a little extra sh shine. Um, then I have an Amaranth Pink from Nurture Soap, which is a nice soft blushy pink. And then Savage Garden, which you guys might remember from um, my Love Potion number 9 soap. So this is like a really deep, foresty green. So I'm going to use those three, and I think I'm just going to um, do a bit of a drop swirl. And I'm actually going to do that one in my cylinder mold. And then just see how that happens, because I think it's going to look really neat. So let's go ahead. I'm going to grab... A couple things to do that with. I think I'll just pour... I'll have to make my white in here. Yeah, we'll do that. So I'm going to start with the um, hipster fragrance. So we'll go ahead and we'll blend our soap. We'll get going on that and then we'll make the hipster because I think that'll, that'll come together quicker. And then uh, do the other one. So I've already got my attachment here. 
Oh, sorry. Pause two seconds. Dog wants to go on a potty break. Okay, sorry about that. Crisis averted. My pups wanted to go potty. And then I had to get him fed. So, life. Alright, so. Let's get going on blending this soap. Right now, this is just my oils and kaolin clay. Just give it a little blend. And we're sitting at about room temperature. And then here's my lye solution, also sitting at about room temperature. Give it a little stir. And since I'm making two different soaps, I kind of want to um, blend to a really light trace because I don't want anything to blend up unexpectedly. And this is actually going to be kind of nice because like with the uh, vanilla sandalwood soap, since I want to do layers, it'll be nice to do that second because then I'll have a little more... Um, It'll be a little stiffer by the time I actually get to working with it. Alright, I'd say that's reached our emulsions pretty quick. And I'm gonna just grab, huh. <clears throat> well, what I'll do is this I'll just split this off into these guys. Sound effects are included. In fact, they're they're probably mandatory. All right, so I'm gonna leave the rest of this. Well, I'll throw a little bit more in each. Fill them up. You guys know I like to make my soap batches a little bit bigger so I have some playroom. So this is an example of playroom. So I'll be adding my fragrance oil individually. And I'm not going to use all of the second one. It's about one and a half ounces. So I'm just going to add a pinch more to each. Because these are, collectively, that was two ounces um, between these two bottles. Then we'll give it a little stir here. As soon as I get my little whisk. All right. I did fill these a little full, didn't I? That's okay. Ah, we're making a mess, y'all. Pro tip, don't do what I'm doing. I need to grab some paper towels. Anyone smarter than me would have told me that this was a bad idea. Do I listen? Absolutely not. You know, I'm actually gonna grab popsicle sticks. I think that would actually stir a little better. Um, or, I'll probably get away with using this guy. Yeah. And I do want to work kind of quickly because this is going to definitely thicken up probably quicker than I want it to. Keep in mind, I'm also testing these fragrances while I'm dragging you guys along for the fun, so things might not work out. Things might work out. We're just going to have fun. 
Personally, I hate when everything's like too polished anyway, and you're like, wow, you've definitely made this soap like six different times before this. So far, this fragrance oil does not seem to be creating any issues. Using this like a little paint mixer. TBH. And when I when I buy fragrance oils, I typically look out for things that are gonna like accelerate trace or um, mess with anything internally. I actually am gonna just get some popsicle sticks because I'm not gonna. Good investment, guys. Keep out for some popsicle sticks. So you want to periodically, if, you've, if you're making a, a batch of something, like a multiple batch of something, make sure you keep touching, moving that around. You don't want it to get too like stagnant or anything. This is going to be messy. Worth it. So that silver actually did become a lot more silver once it got in a soap. It kind of lost that purpley periwinkle sort of look. All right. So these are nice and fluid. They're going to make an excellent swirl in this doohickey. Let's see if I can make sure that's like in a good spot. Yeah, it's in a good spot. I'll just do it from over here. So like I said, this is probably going to be pretty messy. Whatever. Life. We'll just make, make big mistakes, right? One. And I'll try to keep things contained to my area here. This smells like so, like, I don't know. It's hard to describe. We'll rotate our mold a little bit. Oh, I wanted to mention, so I got a bunch of questions after the Easy Peasy Soap tutorial. Um, which I'm still waiting to see if anybody makes it, because it's awesome. Um, but, like, I got some questions about, like, melt and pour versus cold process, which you think is easier. Because, obviously, like, when people are getting into soap making, they don't know necessarily what they want to make yet. Um, and that's totally normal. Like, don't get discouraged. If you want to start with, like, melt and pour soap, which is considered very simple you know, compared to cold process or hot process soap, go right for it. Um, I mean, it depends also on your, your definition of like what you want to consider natural. Um, I mean, it's a glycerin soap, which is totally fine. Um, the thing about it is that uh, they use a lot of different, different chemicals uh, in the creation of that soap. So that glycerin has typically been extracted from other methods of production, um, and it's being recycled into, like, that glycerin soap base. Um, they do make it specifically for that, too, don't get me wrong. Um, but, like, when you, when you do make melt and pour soap, you have to label it differently, if, if you're in the U.S. anyway. Um, so we've, you know, it'll be governed more by the FDA, and you have to just read the label um, you can also get books on how to go about doing that properly so you're not breaking any laws. Um, but yeah, you have to label things pretty differently. Um, melt and pour, you just, you know, buy a soap base. It'll be like in a solid block at a craft store. And um, you melt it in the microwave or on the stove or in a melter. And then you can just kind of go to town. So I'm going to let this... I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Um, 
and like you don't have to work with lye it sets up pretty quickly in most instances like if you're making just small like home batches you know um so it's pretty convenient for people just starting out just to kind of get the get the i don't know experience behind you that being said i don't like mountain pour just because i do like working at least a little bit more naturally. I mean, right now, obviously, I'm using fragrance oils and not like um, essential oils, and that's whatever. But like, I get to control the ingredients that are in my recipe, which you do not have that same control if you're using a melt and pour base. Because, like I said, they are pre made, so somebody else made that soap. And somebody else did work with the lye, it's not like lye was not part of the equation. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to move that there, uh, kind of dust this off, keep using that, okay, I'm going to move some of this crap out of the way. Um, but yeah, if you like melt and pour soap, use it, don't let me shame you. Split off about half of this. bases out there. You can get ones that are um, made with honey, ones that are made with goat's milk, you can get white ones, clear ones, um, opaque ones that are kind of yellow. Like they come in all different types. And then what you do, um, you can mix and match. The colors are really easy to do with melt and pour soap. Um, fragrancing is really easy to do. Typically, you don't have any issues with like scent fading and stuff like that that you would have if you were allowing it to sapon like to be among the saponifying oils. Um. And you can, to an extent, add some additional oils to a melt and pour base, but any additional oil you add is going to affect the um, rate at like the what's the word, bubbling, so the lather, because excess oil does minimize lather production. But you know what, feel free, it's your soap. Personally, I suck at melt and pour because my microwave is cheap as hell and it just does not it does not work for melt and pour i have burned infinite amounts of melt and pour i have burned so much melt and pour and you know when you burn melt and pour like it gets gross it doesn't sit right um like if it's supposed to be clear it'll become opaque and hard and it won't bubble right. Oops, making a little mess. Alright, that's good. Um, so you definitely got to be careful with that. If you have a crappy microwave, try it on the stove. I tried it on the stove. I don't know what I did wrong. I just kept doing everything wrong. I, me and Melton Poor, we're not friends. But then the second I tried cold process soap, I was like, ooh yeah, I can do this. And like lye is a little intimidating, but I've always been the kind of person that's like, the super easy stuff sometimes confuses me. And then when you hand me something a little more challenging, like I pick it up faster. I don't know if it's because I put, my brain puts more effort toward learning it or whatever. 
You know, I've actually got enough soap in here. I think I'm gonna blend these a little bit. But yeah, sometimes, I don't know, if you're like that, maybe cold process will be better for you. I'm super into this brown here, that's for sure. I totally should have done the white first, but you know what? Hindsight's 2020, and I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Just do it. It was never gonna be a true white anyway. All right, cool. So that's nice and blended. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna start with our mold. Get a little base of white in there. Dust a mica line. So to do a mica line, you just gotta take your mica and something like a sieve, and you pour a little bit in, and then you just kinda tap, tap, tap. Make sure it's evenly distributed. Add more as necessary. You want a good coating. Got a little bit of gold mica in this here thing, and it's mixed with a little bit of glitter. The glitter won't really hurt anything. Just help kind of spread it around. And I am pretty much tapped on this gold mica, so I'm going to grab my other one. dog's over here being cute. He's just pulling the crap out of his kennel being ridiculous because I'm not giving him any attention because I'm working on this. As it should be. Okay, so there's our mica line. And then this gets kind of messy, so I mean if you want to if you want to do this, do this, don't do this, doesn't really matter. Um, and then keep stirring because these are going to thicken up a little bit. It's that titanium dioxide, man. It makes it thicken up. See, this one's nice and fluid. Can't predict it. Well, I mean, you can. I can probably actually, like, go ahead and put in my second layer. It'll probably hold. And we're gonna go ahead and do our dusting again. Oops, that was a lot. Set that there. Okay. I just know this is gonna thicken up way faster than I want it to. This design might go out the window, folks. <clears throat> well, you know, I was gonna do this anyway, so let's just do this. Plop this in here.
These are gonna look kind of funny because the obviously the brown soap is at a much different trace than the white soap, but it's gonna give us a cool effect. Cause like on the top half, we'll just have a cool layer of like a blended brown and white soap. So what I'll do is I'll go in here, blend it up just a little bit. Don't over mix it. Cause then your white soap's just gonna turn brown. And then I'm actually gonna spoon it in. We'll do that. So far, these fragrance oils have behaved just perfectly. Like, I can't rave enough. So we'll go ahead and, oops. Well, our micro line has gone trash, friends. I'll just try and make it as even as possible. So some of it's like pudding and some of it is definitely not. It's cool though. It'll look fun to cut it open and see kind of what's going on in there. Give this a little tap. Kind of get some of that stuff settled. And then I am gonna let this one sit for a minute and then thicken up. And then I'm gonna come in like texture it a little bit. Um, in the meantime, I am gonna grab another mold to put this stuff in. Cause you know me, extra stuff James. And don't worry about like the traces being different. Like it's gonna thicken up fine. Like it'll be fine to unmold later. And like you won't even notice the texture difference in the finished product. Um, mold, mold, mold. I want mold. Where is mold? this guy. Okay, so this one's a bit of a jerk. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a glue. And I think my fiance is home, so I'm gonna encourage him to be quiet. Give me just a second. Okay, so I got the rest of the soap into the other mold. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the area and then we'll be back to texture the top and decorate a little bit. So we'll see you in a few. Okay, so we are back. I've done some cleaning up. And I'm ready to texture the top, and then we're going to sprinkle it with a little bit more gold mica. So what I'm going to use is I'm actually going to use a fork and a butter knife. So I'm just fiddling around here. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to like swirl down a little bit um, and then brush it over. So we'll start over here. I'm really gonna clean that off then.
There's a nice little swizzle there. I'm going to go in with our knife. We're just going to kind of push up a little bit at a time. Well, that's kind of fun. Well, this would work better if it were a little softer, but that's okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take... I think it's open. Jeez. Take our mica. And a clean spoon. And just the tiniest amounts will do you. I'm just gonna plop these in here in the ridges that we've created. And then I'm gonna show you a neat trick. So you turn it around and then do this around like a clean space. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna kind of blow it on the floor because I can sweep. And then what we did Let's just sort of blew the opposite direction, so we blew it into those ridges. So now you've got kind of a cool, like, metallic-y gold layer there, right on top. And then hopefully inside, you can kind of see the layering. Hopefully we got some good mica lines, even in the area where our soap was kind of soft and wasn't staying. But I'm really happy with the colors. Um, it kind of has like a chocolatey feel to it, but in reality, like, you know, you think about vanilla sandalwood, you think about wood. This is a good, like, wood color, and the white, the graining from the white. I think it'll look neat. We'll check it tomorrow when we cut it. But, yeah. So, that's it for this video. We made our hipster soap with just a drop swirl with three colors. And then we also made our sandalwood vanilla soap. So, let me know if you've got a favorite. Um, otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow to cut them. Um, and then we'll have another round of uh, checking to see what we like, what we don't like. And then I'll also be testing the rest of the fragrances that I got from Rustic Essentials, and I'm going to be continuing doing them in these small batches um, just to give them a taste. So um, if you like this video and you want to see some more, let me know. Um, like and subscribe for more content, and we will see you soon for the next one. Bye.